Today's video is going to be about this pretty common Singer Industrial sewing machine. This one just happens to be the 3115. Um, I would recommend this machine for doing general tailoring and some medium heavy materials. And the reason that I would is it's a pretty simple machine. It does not have reverse, but you still can lock your stitches just by raising the foot pulling your material towards you and then stitching over what you just stitched. And uh, making this video, I've made other videos on the Singer 3115, but I was running into a problem with this one with the material bunching up underneath uh, the needle plate here. And generally that's a problem that is happening on, the, on your upper thread. But let me show you what was going on with this one. I did get the problem solved. And let me just show you what was going on in case you have the same problem. I've tipped the machine up on the edge and changed our camera angle. So now we're looking at the bobbin case from the bottom of the machine. This is the slide plate. Look up here, you can see the needle bar and whatnot up above the feed dogs. And I'm going to lift the presser foot, take this out. And what was going on was I didn't even catch it right away until I took these two screws out and removed this plate. This machine was built in 1925, so it's been around a long time. Somehow, this area right here, this piece of metal, it's split here so that the thread can go around the bobbin case every time it makes a stitch and around the hook. This was pushed back about an eighth of an inch. It was bent. This should be relatively flat across here for your bobbin case to rock back and forth in just like that and then this rocks back and forth this needs to rock back and forth as the thread goes around to make a stitch and this was bent back just far enough that it wouldn't let the thread go through so the problem was down below here but it seemed like it was up top so that that's how I cured that problem so if you get an old machine, look for that if you're having trouble. Here we're looking at the side of the Singer 3115. There's two screws you can loosen up to get at your needle bar if your timing is off. Just remove this cover and let me grab a screwdriver and you're going to see right here there's a screw going into this collar which tightens your needle bar to the mechanism that moves the needle bar up and down. Okay, this is the way you time the 3115 because the bottom of this machine has a pinned driver, which means there's two metal pins through the shaft. You're not going to change that. And that's what makes this so easy to time. Basically, run your needle all the way down. You'll want to take off this face plate with the proper needle in here, which is a, it's a um, size 16 by 87 or the modern version as a DBX1. You have the proper length needle, you run it all the way down, pull the hand wheel towards you, bring your needle up about 3 16 of an inch, and when you look down through here with this plate off, you should see the needle meeting the hook at that location. Then you can tighten down this, this screw right here. If it's off, this one was off, the needle bar was a little bit too high it wasn't meeting in the right spot I think somebody was sewing some heavy fabric with this for an ex extended amount of time and I think when the problem down below came into play and they couldn't figure it out they just quit using the machine because this was put away in storage for I don't know how long so that's that's another reason I recommend a 3115 3115 properly threaded now with some T70 bonded nylon thread it's a heavier outdoor thread which is resistant to uh, sun and moisture water and I'm just gonna go ahead and bury the needle here now I've got two layers of a heavier canvas type material that's used for uh, like bags and things like that and I'll just go ahead and run this. I've got the machine set on the longest stitch length and this is just on my test bench. And you can hear the, the sound of the shuttle coincides with this take up spring. What it's doing is when this is coming up 
it's pulling that thread around the uh, hook and the bobbin case to make the stitch. And when that piece of metal underneath I showed you earlier was bent, it wouldn't allow that to happen. So here's our ballistic material. There's the front. There's the back. The stitches are pulled up nicely. And so that's kind of the reason that there's a lot of these 3115s out there. Uh, this is a 1925. They made the same machine. It might look slightly different, probably not all the way up into the 50s. And you should be able to find one of these. And that, then if you want to do heavier work and you don't want a big clunky uh, industrial table in your house, you can just make up a simple test bench like I made up here. It's just some three quarter inch plywood. And I, I'm sitting the machine on that to keep it from moving. The weight of the machine will hold the table down. There's a little backstop here and then just a servo motor in the background. And for about $150, you can make a little table like this to set your machine on. And then the reason I built this is I can put any machine on this little test table that I want. I just simply can tip it back to loosen the belt. You can see the belt loosening in the background. Oh, I can pull it towards me to tighten the belt. And with a 3115, they turn over so easily. That's as tight as you need that belt to be. So uh, hopefully that was a helpful tip there if you have one of these and you're having problems with your thread not wanting to go around the bobbin case. This is the first time I've seen that happen on one. Almost a hundred year old machine. You got to look things over. Somebody could have attempted to do a repair on it, accidentally bent that piece. And there you go. Then the machine doesn't function anymore and they just push it off to the side and forget about it. Alright, as always, thanks for watching. See ya.